But first, let's talk about what's hot now. Yesterday, wow. yeah, we gave everybody in the audience and we all got a ticket, lottery ticket, Powerball yeah. lottery ticket, yeah. No, you're not getting one. No, we, <laughs> we did that yesterday. You started a trend. We, started, we spent a good chunk of money. Nothing, nobody We're won losers. last night. We oh, losers. So Saturday, the jackpot is up to $675 million. <laughs> the highest jackpot amount in history. Are you gonna go buy another but ticket? I see, I don't even know. I think I might have won. You did it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because I don't know. I couldn't read the website. It's so complicated. It was so many they different things. They know somebody won. won. They don't, they don't do. know who you yeah. are, but they know yeah. somebody, yes. They're here. They know where you it was sold, that. all that yes. type of No, I didn't know that. I oh, thought okay. I might have won. I was still holding out for hope. No, no. 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 The fun part is a lot of money here. They this know it. if you won. Yeah. Trust do you me. ever feel like I left here and I went straight to buy more, and then I thought I was being greedy? You know when you go and I said, what if I do win in the whole audience and our panel. But and wait, we wait, wait, but you had a thought in your head when you went to sleep. Uh, Remember, what did you say? After a couple glasses of wine, yes. I went to my <laughs> bed. After a a glass glass of wine. And I said, why not me? Yeah. Why yeah. not me? Yeah. Exactly. It's always someone in a remote place. And but I kept thinking, and I went work? to bed and I go, Meg, you're going to wake up a millionaire. <laughs> I really did think that. Like, don't you and think you know like, why and you didn't? Because over. you were supposed to be getting a ticket with me and then you left. Yeah, I did. That's why you didn't get it. God don't like that. Oh, so. Wait, 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 wait. And I even walked outside and I saw a penny on the ground and I'm like, I'm gonna pay it forward and let someone get good luck with a penny. I mean, that's how screwed up I was. You were gonna give here. somebody a penny? I said, I go, um, see a penny, um, pick it up all day long, you have good luck. And I oh. said, pay it forward and you never know. Da 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 da. Ah. I'm like, so I've just like made this whole thing in my brain. So, so if the odds of winning are now, they're one in 292.2 .2 million. Is it worth buying the yes. ticket or? I yes. think everybody should buy one ticket. <laughs> Like, if nobody wins again and we all buy a ticket, doesn't the jackpot continue oh, to yeah. grow? Yes. So, it goes to like so, yeah, billion. we should. Everybody should buy one ticket. It's well, one dollar. You I mean, never know. You're you're probably not going to win, but $2? I think. But I think. Two dollars. Oh, it's just two dollars. Yeah. But I think uh, you just thinking about winning, what it does uh, to you emotionally. I think it's a good thing. It's like a positive thing. My heart is But look at when you hear about these people after they win, they're always miserable. Bad things always oh, happen because greed takes over, or their, their relatives. Yeah, exactly. their lives are miserable, but I would take that chance. But don't you in your brain sit chance. and say how you're going to divvy it up? I'm like, okay, I'm going to give everyone a million bucks to my family. Let's cut, start there, and then I'm going to get funny. I mean, you start to think of what you can do to help people. If you win $600 million, your family's coming for more than a million of people. Okay, my family would come for way more than a million of people. All right, we're going to move on. If you're going to buy a ticket, good luck to all of you. You're going to lose, but good luck. All right. <laughs> I'm you just being a realist. Positive thing. I'm being a realist. Think positively. How are you going to tell her about being positive I'm that positive you didn't win? You're not going to win. Is that <laughs> you hear a lot. This is actually a serious story. You hear a lot of, about people who become addicted to painkillers. It is a very big problem in this country. West Virginia is now trying something unique to solve this problem. Hopefully, they're allowing addicts to sue the doctors who prescribed the drugs because they have such a high right. Wait, listen. Their rate of overdose, I think, is the highest in the country. And they've been raiding some of these so-called pain clinics around West Virginia. And basically, these doctors are just writing up prescriptions. They don't even see the people. And then they, they hook them on the drug. They make a ton of money. They've closed out of 19 is, clinics. Yeah. They've shut down 12 because of this kind of behavior. So I, I don't think it's a bad idea. No, I not really at all. Don't. I think it's a fantastic idea. I think these doctors in particular, and if you, if you don't know about these clinics, you should look them up online. They're negligent. Right. It's, uh, it's, it's a huge epidemic there. And I think you should even go further than that. I think in these situations, you should hold accountable the pharmaceutical companies that are filling these orders, the wholesale orders, the pharmacies that are filling these exactly. orders They're going after well, all of them. Yeah. Because Regulation. They should, because but do you know what this is going to happen here? Is what it's so going to be happy. for doctors. No, it, it, well, we live in a litigious society anyways. Right. But but it's the doctors are going to be afraid to prescribe to people who really have pain management issues. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think so. If I'm a doctor, wait a second. If I even, they're not even the insurance malpractice is already at a high time rate. If I'm a doctor sitting there going, someone's telling me they're really in pain, and I was like, God, I, but I don't I, know if I'm going to do I, it this time. Know, as a doctor, agree, we should be able to figure that out. I agree with Megan because, no, first of all, I want to know where these doctors are because I almost had two pregnancy scares because I couldn't get no birth control pills because <laughs> nobody wants to give me anything. So I don't 
see it open well, free like you know, You know something's wrong. I just okay. found out uh, this That's out true. today. I had a baby twice. But there's okay. a prescription for every single person in America. A, a man, child, a and a painkiller right. prescription for every single person in America. Are, how That's how many prescriptions are out yeah. there in just a year. But That's can insane. I ask you a question? They aren't even looking at the patients. Exactly. They're just writing up prescriptions. So they are negligent. Like that, okay. Yes. But we have to understand that's not always the case. And right. people, here's what happens. You say, I can sue my doctor because he gave me a prescription. People stop taking responsibility. So, you know, we have to find a better system than that. Because See, too much of people are hooked. This is not but a Can I ask you a question? Can I flip the yeah. script? Have anyone, has anyone here or anything gone into a doctor's office and been embarrassed to ask for pain medicine? Because then you're going to think they think, you know, you're addicted or a junkie. I've been that person who's been in pain and been like, I can't ask for pain medication because oh. I feel bad. Really? No, I mean, yeah. Well, somebody else. Yeah. 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 Because Maybe it's a, because it's certain... to go together so y'all not embarrassed anymore. Because I <laughs> ask for everything. But you don't even have to ask for it. You can say, I'm, would you, I need to be examined. I'm in severe pain. Right. Yeah, but yeah, you don't exactly. just say, give and me a, whatever. And a good doctor will examine you to determine yeah. what the appropriate pain medication is for what your situation is. Vicodin should not yeah. just be given out like right. candy. Exactly. They could give you, like, very different pain medication for what you're feeling versus somebody that just had back somebody surgery. Somebody could still become yeah. addicted whether somebody does it properly no. as a doctor or That's not. That's what I'm saying. So, you Megan, know, we have, you're, you're, you're going to need pain, pain medication when you what? don't win the lottery on uh, Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Right. No what, Meredith? <laughs> you are getting nothing. Okay, I'm getting nothing. I want to move on to children, one of our favorite topics. If you have kids, you know there are days when they miss school. Sometimes they're sick. Sometimes they cut classes. Sometimes you know. Sometimes you don't. But children who are consistently absent from the classroom, if you are in Muncie, Indiana, authorities are cracking down not on the kids. I mean, they are, but they're going after the parents. Yeah. They are. Yeah. It's a, all right. Earlier this week, three parents of Southside Middle School were charged with neglect of a dependent. That is a felony. And that's because of their children's school attendance record during the first semester. And that charge carries with it, if they were found guilty of this, uh, a prison sentence of up to 30 months. So it's Crazy. serious. They don't want to put people in, in prison. I mean, they're very clear about that. That's not what they want to do. They want to get them, when a kid has been absent at least 15 days, I think, mm -hmm. and they've, they send out certified mail to the parents to let them know. So they know the parents have seen it. If the parents still do nothing, they want to get them into court in front of a judge and fi figure out why. Why is this happening? What? And I, I get it. I think but it's a great idea. I think it is too, because don't you think, if your child has missed 15 days of school, there could be something going on in that sure. home, right? Maybe that child's not even being fed at home. Maybe the parents aren't present. Right. I think it's a great thing. And these parents aren't being arrested just because their child missed school one day. You're talking about three weeks of missed school. Yeah. Something is happening in that I know by the time you get so. to something, to a level like that, you have to think that the child is already probably a delinquent. So maybe the parents don't know. A lot of things happen that parents don't know about, especially when you talk about children who are middle school. I think if it's an elementary school child and you're taking that kid to school, but once you get 13 or 14, I mean, I was doing a lot of things my parents didn't know about. So I think there needs Did to be the a happy... never meeting. notified that? Well, back in, when I was going to school when dinosaurs were roaming, they didn't do so many, <laughs> so many things that they do now. Like, now, you know, we have a child in the home, or my, my grandparents yeah. do, and they have a phone call the day that that child misses yeah. school That's so that you know right away. Right, right. So maybe they need to implement yeah. something like that there. You know there. what? This, this will affect poor communities. What about parents who are working four or five jobs, you know, who are not home that much? They're putting the onus on them, which is very hard because you don't know people's circumstances either. P parents are trying their best. Yeah, but, but if you a can't lot raise of parents are doing their best. The school has been trying to work with families. Right. Yeah. They've exactly. sent out. And so. it's also only for middle school kids and, and younger. Yeah, it's not for high school yeah. children. So. They figure at that point the parents have lost control, I think, <laughs> at that point. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a good way to switch gears. Take a look at the cover of Men's Health. Look at that. Zinsky. Zinsky. Looking so good. Look inside. We remember. Oh, yeah, look inside. Oh, look inside. Oh, oh God. Oh. 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 Are you going to share it? Yeah, yeah okay. okay. I hear it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he was, he's preparing for a role. He's playing a Navy SEAL, so he got in great shape. But his wife, Emily Blunt, apparently doesn't like this look. She likes him more doughy. That's what he told Stephen Colbert, you know, has that show, The Late Show, um, that his wife would prefer to have doughy guy back. <laughs> now, which, let's put them both up. If you like buff, wait a minute. If you like on the left, doughy boy, clap. He looks great both. I like If you like the after look, clap. That's why. I don't know. 
This is why I'm calling. I am calling bull on this. Emily Blunt, she, she has to say this because she's preemptively striking. So if he does turn a little doughy in his older age, then she can say, see, I liked you like that way anyway. If she's, if she's oh, saying, oh my gosh, I love you like this, it will never yeah. go back. It starts to sag when you get a little older know, no matter what. She has to say she loves the doughy no, one better. I, I, I think looking at a cut guy, realistically, yes, that is appealing and it's sexy. But when you're in the bed, you want to feel a little cushion and this, and you don't want to be quick with your fingers and ripping up. I like to feel a little, oh, She loves him no matter what. But, like, come on. I mean, I prefer my husband when he's working out and he feels strong and masculine but I like he a man. Good. I didn't he think did. he, he looked did. bad. He, he looks good. bad. I think no. that's what she's saying. He looked good to yeah. me always, but what now doughy? it's. What's you know, doughy mean? No, I like, mean, the Doughy is soft. a bad soft. word. I'm yeah. just soft. So, I mean, you have a theory about this. You know what? I, not for Miss, not for John, but I say you have to always be careful when a guy starts to work out a little bit more when you're a female. Mm. Something is going on. Oh, because he's cheating. A little, on, yeah. little sketch. It's a little maybe, sketchy. Maybe, no, but maybe he's trying to look good for you. Well, I hope so. And it's also if it's not. I'm what are you so, sorry, I think I'm, if it's not part of his regular routine, and all of a sudden he yeah. joins a gym and he starts to wear cologne, something's happening. But some men just like to work out. <laughs> you know? Red flag for sure. Yeah. 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 Conspiracy. No, keep an eye out. I agree with you.